In this tutorial, we're going to animate a walk cycle using Blender's Rigify add-on. So first, you're going to need to download the body mesh file and then open it up in Blender. Uh, or you can use one of your own if you have one, but we're going to use this example mesh for this tutorial. So select the model by right-clicking and then press Alt and G to place it in the center of the scene. To enable Rigify, go to File and then User Preferences, or you can press Control or Command Comma for the keyboard shortcut, and then open the Add-on tab. Type Rigify into the search box, and then tick the box to activate the add-on. All of Blender's add-ons work in this way. So make sure that the body is selected, and then press Shift-C to place the 3D cursor at the base of the mesh. Press Shift A and open the Add menu and hover over the Armature option. Uh, now you should notice that there is a new type of armature that you can choose, which is called a Human Meta Rig that's been enabled by the Rigify add on. So select this one, then <clears throat> right click the armature to select it, and in the Armature Properties tab, choose X-Ray so that we can see the bones through the mesh at all times. Press Tab to go into Edit Mode and then press S to scale the armature to match the size of the mesh. You can scale in two ways in relation to the 3D cursor's position by pressing the full stop or alternatively you can scale according to the central point of the selected object by pressing comma. So if you switch between full stop and comma, you can rotate in different ways or scale in different ways. So open the toolbar by pressing T in 3D view and under the armature options, choose the x-axis mirror. This means that any changes you make on one side will also be matched on the other side. Select the ball at the end of each bone and then move it into position using G to grab so that it matches the joints of the body mesh. It's best to start this process in front view ortho by pressing 1 followed by 5 and once you've finished there switch to top view by pressing 7 and move the bones again and finally in side view by pressing 3 to make sure that the bones align with the body from all perspectives. Go back to object mode, and in the armature tab, under the Rigify section, click the button labeled Generate. It may take a few moments, but Blender will create a new rig for you automatically. This new rig is an additional one to the human meta rig that we added ourselves a minute ago, which we don't need anymore, so we can move it to another layer by right-clicking on it to select, and then pressing M and selecting an empty layer where we can leave the meta rig out of our way. Next we need to attach the body to the new armature using a parent-child relationship. So first select the body mesh by right clicking and then shift right click to select the new rig. Press Control P and choose with automatic weights from the menu and the rig will now be attached. Press Control Tab to enter pose mode, or you can choose this option from the drop down menu in 3D view and take a look at the controls. This rig uh, is a little different from moving the bones in a manual rig that you might have set up yourself, so just experiment with uh, how it works. You can move the arms, the legs, hands, feet, head, any body part by using. G or OR to move or rotate the controllers. If you find any problems with the way the rig is moving the mesh, for example if it's causing the mesh to deform in strange ways when you move the controllers, then you can use weight painting to adjust the weights of the bones. In the armature tab you'll find a list of layers. If you shift and left click on the third last layer, the deforming bones will become visible. In pose mode, right click on the mesh. Now press control tab and enter weight paint mode. So make sure you're in pose mode, right click on the mesh, 
and then press Control tab once you're in weight paint mode then you can right click on one of the bones in the 3d view toolbar tick the X mirror box under options and you're gonna cut your workload in half any adjustments that you make on one side will be mirrored for you so to change the weight amount move the slider in the toolbar you can also change the brush options from here if your mesh is not deforming then you may not need to adjust any of the weights and you might not need to go into weight paint mode at all um, any bones that have higher weight value will move less when you adjust the poses using the controller bones in pose mode so when you're finished press control tab to go back to pose mode right click on the armature and in the armature tab hide the deforming bones layer again by shift and left clicking on it uh, which is the third last layer right click on one of the leg controls to select it for example the foot control open the properties panel by pressing N in the 3d view window and find the rig main properties heading and slide the FK IK value all the way to the right so that it reads 1.0 which is the maximum value for the IK select the opposite control on the other leg and do the same thing so this enables IK rigging on your legs which basically means that when you move the foot control for example then the whole leg will respond to uh, the movement in the way that a leg should by bending at the knee and so on before we start animating let's tidy up our display a little bit so in the properties panel under the rig layer switch off tweak arm l ik arm or ik leg l fk and leg or fk obviously if you wanted to animate these controls you'd need to leave them on but for what we're planning to do in this simple walk cycle we don't need to be able to see those ones so in the armature tab also switch off x-ray mode this will make it easier for us to animate because the display won't be so cluttered with things that we don't actually need select the animation workspace from the screen layout menu this will change the interface layout for us opening a dope sheet a graph editor and a camera view for us switch the dope sheet into an action editor mode from the drop down menu the action editor shows us all the keyframes that are associated with armature pose actions while the dope sheet um, shows keyframes for basically all of the objects that are in the scene switch on the record button which will add a keyframe every time that you move, rotate, or scale one of the controllers. Switch to side view by pressing 3 on the numpad, and make sure that you're also in ortho view by pressing 5 to toggle between perspective and ortho. Press the shift left arrow in the timeline to jump back to frame 1. Move the left foot controller forward and a keyframe will be automatically added. Move the legs and the arms so that the left leg is stepping forward and the right leg is trailing behind. Move the arms so that they're opposite the legs, that is the right arm is forward and the left arm is behind. So when we're walking, our arms move in the opposite direction of our legs usually. Next, rotate the hip controller clockwise to follow the motion of the legs so if you switch to top view by pressing 7 and then after you've selected the the hip controller press or to rotate followed by Z then you can rotate on the Z axis only rotate the shoulders the opposite direction to follow the motion of the arms this time anti-clockwise when we walk our shoulders and hips rotate opposite each other as well. Select the head controller and in the bone tab untick the inherit rotation box. This will stop the head from automatically rotating with the shoulders and hips uh, to give us a more realistic look. Select all the bones by pressing A. All of the changes have already been recorded individually 
because we have the record button switched on, but it's a good idea to insert a keyframe for all the bones to make sure that they start the way that you want them to start. So press I and choose Lock Rot to insert a location rotation keyframe for all of the bones in frame one. Now press Control C, or you can click on the Copy Pose icon in the 3D View header. In the timeline, press Shift and the up arrow twice to go to frame 21. Uh, this shortcut skips 10 frames at a time. Click the Flip Paste icon, which is the last icon in the Copy Paste section, uh, to paste the pose that we copied in reverse on frame 21 and also insert a keyframe for all of the bones, as long as we have them all selected. So now play the animation and see how it looks so far. Go to frame 11 and pull up the torso to straighten up the body. Lift up the right leg so that the knee is bending backwards and sticking out in front with the foot pointing 45 degrees downwards. Press shift and the left arrow to go back to frame 1, and then press Alt-A to play the animation. Alt-A stops it as well. Go back to frame 11 and press A to select all the bones. Press Ctrl C to copy the pose. Jump to frame 31 and click the flip paste button again to insert a keyframe with the pose reversed. Go to frame 1 again, copy the pose, and paste this pose as it is not flipped onto frame 41 so that we can end the animation with the same pose that we started with. To preview the walk cycle as a loop, change the end frame to 40. As we have 41 frames and the last frame is exactly the same as the first frame, by having 40 frames we'll be able to make a perfect loop. You can now tweak the motion as much as you see necessary. For example, we can go to frame 4 and we can move the foot so that it is resting on the ground. We can pull down the torso to simulate real movement. When, we, when our foot hits the ground, our body tends to move downwards slightly and then back up again when our foot comes off the ground. Copy the pose and flip paste it into frame 24. So these two frames that we've just added are in between our main keyframes and they add a little bit of extra detail to the motion. To speed up the walk cycle, all you have to do is move the keyframes closer to each other. An easy way to do this is in the dope sheet. So if we select all of the keyframes by pressing A and then press S to scale, and if we drag towards the left, then our keyframes get closer together, our animation becomes shorter. So when you reach the duration that you want, or the number of frames that you want in the animation, then you can left click to lock it in. Try reducing the length of the animation to 26 frames. So your end frame should then become 25. To move your character forward, you can move the rig forward a little bit at a time everywhere that you have a pose keyframe or alternatively you could go back to object mode and you could animate the entire rig forward as a whole either way you're going to need to match the forward motion with the poses the speed of the forward motion with the speed of the poses to minimize the effect of sliding which is a common error when uh, you're attempting to make people walk looks like they're walking on ice um, so you just need to synchronize and coordinate the timing between the poses and the forward motion so in the dope sheet rename your walk cycle to walk 001 or whatever you want and save your file um, in this tutorial we've learned how to animate a walk cycle using blender's rigify add-on so all that remains is to export and render our animation and see the finished result.